whatever the problem was. Zidi, if you can hear us, great to talk with you tonight. Um, yes. How are you doing? And, and, and it's good to talk to you as always. I want to start off with just the ruling. The biggest news out of tonight is this Pennsylvania ruling from the uh, federal district court judge. What do you make of that? Yes. Well, I, you know, each of the district court judges has their own particular perspective on things. And I think that judge was appointed by President Obama. We really don't expect to win a lot of the district court cases, but ultimately the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court are, will have to get it right. We're very clear on the law and the facts on multiple issues, and we haven't even begun to present the big fraud case yet that I am still working on. And it's going to be a blockbuster. I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's interesting. Obviously, I mean, you guys had the news conference this week. Uh, there was a lot of compelling stuff in there. It sounded like you guys were making progress going down a road of investigation. But as I think anybody understands, when you're trying to lay out a case, it takes time to find out what you have. You, you had a bit of a rub with, uh, with Tucker Carlson this week, um, who, who basically said you didn't have any evidence when they asked you to come on. What is the truth of the matter there? Because that made a lot of news. Oh, yes. Well, he sent me some very uh, abrasive and disrespectful emails or text messages, and I responded politely, offering him a, a different person as a witness who could explain it. I simply didn't have time to do it then, and I sent him a copy of one of the compelling affidavits that we have in the case. And apparently that wasn't sufficient for him. He was having a little bit of a tantrum. But I didn't see or hear what he said, and I haven't had time to listen to what he said after that. I'm just proceeding on my course of getting the case ready to prove in a court, which is where we prove cases right. of law, not in the media. How, how, what is your timeline as, as you look at this? You know, what's the timeline you think before you can you can put out some of this evidence that can really, you know, if you want to if you want to shut the media up or they say that you guys have nothing, when will you have some of this stuff that's that's this hardcore evidence in paper and writing? Well, f frankly, the affidavits we've already introduced are hardcore evidence. They're okay. firsthand testimony of witnesses who saw how and why the system was created and how it worked to accomplish the objective for Hugo Chavez. There are people who saw ballots being destroyed. We've got evidence from people who saw fake ballots being created. We've got all kinds of different evidence. And then we've got the statistical and mathematical evidence that's absolutely irrefutable. I mean, a coin doesn't land on the same side when you flip it 186,000 times. You can't just inject 86,000 Biden votes and expect anybody to believe those are real. And they're not. When we, when we see, no matter how you analyze the statistics, whether it's the predictive model or the actual data as it comes in, it, it doesn't hold water. And we've got other testimonial evidence that appears to be coming in now to indicate the Democrats literally added 35,000 votes to every Democratic candidate to begin with. 35 in, in, in any particular state or you say 35,000 where? We've got it definitely all over one state, and I would be willing to bet it happened everywhere. And when you when you lay all this out and you're going to do this in court, uh, do you have what you think is irrefutable evidence that will that will make up the minds of millions of American people? Well, the burden of proof in court is only a preponderance of the evidence. Mm -hmm. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the criminal standard. But frankly, with everything we've got, these should be criminal prosecutions at a at a significant level for fraud and conspiracy to defraud yeah. beyond a, provable beyond a reasonable doubt. There are hundreds of thousands of people in our criminal system right now in prison who were convicted on far less evidence of guilt than we have here. Sidney Powell, I want you to react to something that the scene, this Republican senator from Pennsylvania, Pat Toomey, just said in reaction to uh, the district court judge's decision. The district court judge is someone who's very close to Pat Toomey. Senator Toomey says that President Trump has now, quote, exhausted all plausible legal options to challenge the result of the presidential race in Pennsylvania. Is that true? No, that's not true at all. Can you explain why the senator's wrong? hardly begun to fight. <laughs> Can you explain that? Why is the senator wrong? Well, he's wrong because Pennsylvania was one of the hotbeds of many varieties of fraud and criminal acts that the Department of Justice, frankly, should be in there prosecuting. And we're going to dump a whole lot of them into evidence 
in our fraud case that we're going to file in Pennsylvania. Why do you think the Justice Department isn't being more aggressive in following up on what you see? I think the Justice Department has known about this issue for a long time and turned a blind eye to it. Why, though? I wonder how much the CIA actually had a role in in starting this kind of program to begin with. Why would use on other countries? Why would Donald Trump's Justice Department not be interested in this? Well, you know, I wish Donald Trump had as much control over the Justice Department as people think he does. It's it's taken on a life of its own. I don't think even Bill Barr has the control over the Justice Department that he would like to have because there are so many lawyers in so many different places doing whatever it is they want to do and ignoring the standards and practices that historically created the Justice Department to seek justice and not convictions. I mean, I wrote a book about that back in 2014. So, I mean, we've been on this increasingly bad path for decades now, and it's done nothing but get worse because nobody's told the truth and stood up for the truth. But Americans are now. They're livid about this and they can see it. Everybody saw it election night. They saw votes being subtracted from President Trump and appearing on the Biden side of the scale. And that's exactly what this Dominion system was designed to do. And we have eyewitness testimony to its entire creation for that very purpose. There have been I mean, there have been warnings about this system. We were talking about it earlier, Sidney. I mean, you had Senators Warren and Klobuchar that made a big stink about the 2018 midterm, saying that they don't trust Dominion, that they saw evidence that that votes could be switched using these systems. These are Democrats who ran for president. What I don't understand is how how is how does this get ignored? I mean, this is a this is a nationwide. This is a democracy shocking scandal, if it is true. It is. And it's it's so big. I can't even wrap my head around it. I just wonder, how does this happen? Well, that's exactly how it happens, because it's so big. Nobody wants to wrap their head around it. Nobody wants to untie all the little knots that go into it. But we have to if we're going to be a constitutional republic. This cannot go on. Our votes must be counted fair and true. Every legal vote is entitled to be counted and every illegal vote nullifies the vote of an American citizen and our our public will of we the people. It's absolutely counter to everything this country was founded on. So we have got to get this fixed now. We can't I can't unsee it. I'll tell you that I certainly cannot unsee what I have seen. And I'm going to make sure everybody else knows everything I've seen, too, because we've got to hold our government institutions accountable and do better than this by each other. And it does cut across both political parties. It cuts across generations now or at least multiple decades of this kind of corruption. It's got increasingly more sophisticated. Has anybody given you smudge the edge of a ballot and stick it through the machine and the ballot would be rejected. But now they can literally drag and drop hundreds of thousands of votes wherever they want them. I mean, and that's they everybody knew when they bought the system. And that was one of the features of the system. We've caught people lying now and saying that things that happened that ran people out of voting areas. And we've got tons of evidence. I just it's so much it's hard to pull it all together. I mean, how big of a you know, if if this happened, how big of a conspiracy, how many people would have had to have been in on something like this? Oh, gosh, uh, probably uh, thousands, including the people running the machines at each of the poll polling centers. We know, for example, that one of the higher ups of Dominion went to Detroit the night of the election to to handle things himself. And we also have evidence that there were any number of VPN lines open to the Internet for foreign actors to be meddling in it. Has anybody given you an explanation that that as to why they had to turn the machines off? You talk about how the machines no, got turned well, off. Well, yes, and then our, 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 key, our, our witness from Venezuela who saw it all created and how it worked said that he knew as soon as the machines were turned off in those key straits, it was because we the people in voting Trump and voting for Trump in a landslide election had essentially broken the algorithm that had been pre-programmed into the machine. So they had to stop counting in those states and areas and backfill the vote with fraudulent mail-in ballots or whatever means they used to do it, whether they just injected numbers or trashed 
uh, votes for Trump otherwise and change the numbers. I don't know exactly how they did it right now in each spot, but that's essentially the way it worked. Let me ask you about the state of Georgia. Obviously, yesterday, you know, the governor there, he um, certified the election for Joe Biden. It's about 12,000 votes. And what you see, will Georgia switch? Yeah, that's a total farce. Uh, Georgia's probably going to be the first state I'm going to blow up. And, and Mr. Kemp and the Secretary of State need to go with it because they're in on the Dominion scam with their last-minute purchase or award of a contract to Dominion of $100 million. The State Bureau of Investigation for Georgia ought to be looking into financial benefits received by Mr. Kemp and, and uh, the Secretary of State's family about that time. And another benefit Dominion was created to award is what I would call election insurance. That's why Hugo Chavez had it created in the first place. But I also wonder where he got the technology, where it actually came from, because I think it's hammer and scorecard from the CIA. Just to clarify, you're saying that Governor Kemp, who's been a longtime ally of the president, is, it, is directly involved because of financial benefit in the conspiracy to defeat the president in Georgia? We have certainly been told that there is evidence of that and it would warrant an investigation if anybody were actually going to do an honest investigation. What more could you tell us about a bad alleged conspiracy? Uh, is the governor's I involved? can't. Yeah, I can't give you any more details on that now, but it would certainly warrant an investigation. George if it had been reported to me as a law enforcement officer, I would be investigating it steadfastly. You know, I know you say you, you want to do your arguing in court. You are an attorney. You're not a press secretary. But you all did have a press conference last week. Jordan Sekulo said that there's going to be a filing soon in Georgia that would be explosive. Can you tell us anything? Can you make some news with us here tonight? Tell us anything new that you're going to present in that filing in Georgia. Well, I'm, I, I can't say that yet. But hopefully this week we will we will get it ready to file. Sydney, what's and it, it will it will be biblical. Biblical. What what is the state where where was it the worst? From what you see and what you're alleging, what state was switched the most? Oh, that's really hard to say. Georgia is extremely bad. Uh, we've got ballots being shredded, ballots being thrown out in trash bags, uh, lying by people working in the center. Um, the votes being switched, the algorithms being run. You name the manner of fraud, and it occurred in Georgia. These are in the, in the Atlanta area counties. counties, those counties, Fulton, DeKalb? Yeah, the, I, think, I think the algorithm ran most probably across the country. Can I say that for sure yet? No, I can't say that for sure yet, but it looks that way. And it looks like 35,000 votes were added to every Democratic candidate. You also talked about this ability of the system, and I thought this was so interesting when you said it, that it can take a vote and it can make a vote for Biden worth more than a vote for Trump. Do you think that that happened or is that another part of the system that maybe wasn't used? No, I think that definitely happened. I think that was the first step with the system to weight the votes so that a Biden vote is worth 1.23, say, and a, and a Trump vote is worth the, the rest of that. Uh, and so the Trump vote is about three quarters and the Biden vote is one and a quarter. What do you and that way, that's, you can see the reports and the records of fractional numbers for the vote. Yeah. It's nuts. It is. I mean, it, it, everything, you're, everything you're alleging, frankly, is nuts, which is why I think you're getting so much scrutiny and so much criticism. But if it's true... And we don't know. And that's just a simple thing is that we don't know yet if it's true because we can't see what you've seen. I want to ask you about right. Michigan. Um, Michigan's a bigger margin than the rest of them. It's like 100 and maybe 150,000. Uh, what are you seeing in Michigan? We're seeing essentially the same things in Michigan except larger number of ballots being stuffed in. It's the old fashioned stuffing the ballot box. They're just doing it by computer instead of by paper. It's, that's really all it is. They're dragging and dropping files of votes from one person to another instead of just stuffing paper ballots in the ballot box. Can you, can you specifically... And, you know, corruption in elections has been going on forever. I remember LBJ saying, you know, send some guys down to the cemetery because those people, if they were alive, would have voted for me. And they take the name and the birthday, and that's what they did. So it's Saturday night. Can you... But it's, 
can you pre I'm sorry, can you preview for us as specifically as you can what's going to happen this coming week, starting Monday morning? Tell us where you're going to file, what you expect to happen by Friday. Well, I don't, <clears throat> personally, I don't expect to file anything by Monday. I'm hoping we can get it ready by Wednesday. If not, it should be ready by Friday. But it's a massive project to pull this fraud claim together with the evidence that I want to so, put so, in. So are you saying you're going to with. You're and, gonna file? And remember, it's not, a, this isn't a summary judgment motion where we actually have to produce any evidence now. Your typical lawsuit, you just file a statement of what the charges are without any affidavits or anything. But are you saying the, you're going to file the same? The way the, the media is going about this is absolutely ridiculous and unreasonable to expect us to put evidence in right now. Although we are, we know election issues they're on an expedited schedule, but I could wait a month to file the fraud case and everybody would have to undo their certifications because it's so bad. But are you saying you're going to file the same case in multiple jurisdictions or in one jurisdiction? Each one is a little bit different depending on what happened in the state, the different manner and means and the evidentiary aspects that support each one. You know, we've got different affidavits from different witnesses in each of the states. So there are going to be some differences between them, but they're going to be claims that are, are identical. Some of the legal claims are going to be identical. For example, in a, in a number of states, the, there were modifications to the machine after the statutory cutoff date that should invalidate every vote cast on the machine. I mean, Georgia cannot, there's no way Georgia can proceed to have an election using those machines for the runoff candidates. That's absolutely absurd. You know, as we, as we wrap this up, Sydney, I think everybody at home right now wants to see this. They want to see what you say you've seen. Is that going to be possible at any point? Are we going to be able to, to, to see some of these problems and some of these issues, the way these, these systems work and the way this uh, Dominion works? Yes, and there's actually evidence on online now. I mean, we need to try to get our website up to date with the complaints that have already been filed. But exhibits were attached, for example, to Lynn Wood's complaint in Georgia that are, are remarkable and stunning, including the affidavit of the young man from Venezuela who saw Hugo Chavez create how they did the software, hire people to do it and get it done, and then how it worked to make sure he won every election thereafter. That's crazy. what it's designed to do. Their, their, their own yeah. handbook tells you that these things are features of their system. Right. Are we supposed to think they didn't use the features? Heck no, they used them. And, and they used them against their own candidates. The Democrats used them against Bernie Sanders in 2016. And somebody even told him what had been done to him when Hillary Clinton won that primary, and he didn't. And instead of standing up for the American people and the right to vote, he sold out. You're saying Dominion, the, the Smartmatic Dominion system was used in 2016 when Hillary beat Bernie in the primary? Yes. Wow. I don't think we had heard that yet. That's, 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 an, yep. that's an incredible development right there. And you say he knows that. Bernie Sanders knows that. Yes. The person who sent me the data told me that they informed Bernie Sanders of all their findings, and he didn't do anything except get enough money to buy another fabulous house. <laughs> wow. I'm telling you, it's been used for both parties. One of the big problems is that we don't know who was elected by buying their election through Dominion. Uh, I'm sure it crosses party lines. I'm not, that's not an accusation against every politician. It's certainly not mean, meant to be, but it means we don't know which ones got elected that way and how much they knew about how it was being used for or against them, certainly not against them.